What's up, y'all? It's your man, Stephen Bartle, coming at you with another edition of Bartle's Breakdown. I'm your host, and I've got a friend and a special guest on today, C.L. Brown, college basketball reporter. C.L., how you doing, brother? What's good, man? I, I was thinking to myself, to, to your viewers and listeners, everybody couldn't have got me on this because, first of all, I didn't ask what we're doing. You know, um, the quarantine got us on locked. I haven't been to a barber in a minute now. You know, <laughs> so I, I'm even going with my glasses today instead of contacts. You know what I'm saying? But uh, just so everybody who who already listens to you already knows this, but I I got that much respect for you, and I know we're gonna have a, a good podcast here. So it was like whenever you ask something, I'm there. I appreciate that, CL, and and my viewers will start to figure out that I pay people to say stuff like that. So. <laughs> You know, no, it's all good, brother. I appreciate you coming on, man. Just want to talk a little bit about uh, your unique vantage point in the sport of college basketball. And, you know, you're in Tobacco Road. Can you tell our, my viewers, like, what entities do you work with as a college basketball reporter? Well, this was the first season um, I've been on my own. Uh, I've I branched off now. CLBrownHoops.com is, is my website. Um, it was an interesting year all the way around in college basketball, not just on the court for me this year. But in the in the past, I, I most worked recently worked uh, with the Athletic for two years. I was with ESPN.com for for four years. Um, worked a long time at the Louisville Courier Journal. While there, I covered both Indiana, which is when I met you, um, uh, and I covered the University of Louisville. So. Uh, and I'm from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, from Tobacco Road originally, came back home when I got hired at ESPN to uh, to be based in the Triangle. So I'm a longtime college hoop fan, um, just, you know, growing up where I did, we didn't have the pros, so our focus was always on college basketball mm. and those, those Friday afternoons, ACC tournament quarterfinal start when they roll. The old school, they got to roll the TV in the classroom for you to, <laughs> for you to watch. But we get to watch that noon game uh, on Fridays for the ACC tournament. So uh, that's, that's kind of, you know, how I, how I got to love college hoops and, and why I still love covering it now. Was there anybody, uh, CL, that you looked at, at from a journalistic standpoint that you said, you know what, I like her style or I like his style? Was there anyone like that? For you when you made the decision that this is what you wanted to do? Yeah, there, there are really a, a bunch of people, to be honest. Um, first and foremost, I would say that Terrence Moore, who used to write for the Atlantic Journal-Constitution as a columnist, uh, he took me under his wing early. Like, it, this might have been the first ACC tournament I actually covered after I graduated from college and, and uh, you know, it was in Greensboro. And I just happened to, we was in a media room. I was searching for a place to sit. He wasn't even sitting down. His, his stuff was already there. And there was just an open spot, you know, open seat. I'd plop my stuff down there. And then later on, when we were both sitting and working, struck up a conversation. And, uh, you know, he was, he was instrumental in kind of uh, helping to shape me early on and, and figure out what this business was all about, which I, I'm eternally grateful because you know obviously he was well established and I was just you know a young pup starting out so he, he's somebody who played a, a huge role in kind of um, uh, not necessarily the same style but just kind of getting me acclimated in, into what what to expect in the business and everything and uh, I'd say Leon Carter was was the second person but Leon is behind the scenes. He's been an editor. I met him when he was the sports, uh, well, he was an assistant sports editor for uh, the New York Daily News when I met him. Um, okay. Now he's with ESPN. He, he ended up being the sports editor, executive sports editor at New York Daily News for a while. And uh, now he's, he's been with ESPN for some time now. I can't even remember how long. But um, yeah, those, those two people were principal and kind of me learning the business, getting established. Even today, if I have a question about something or, or uh, uh, want to know how I should approach something, I'll bounce things off of them. And, you know, it, it's one thing maybe I even took for granted when I was that young, but 
it's so instrumental to have good mentors and, and just, you know, veteran experienced people that you can talk to. Uh, CL, was there a seminal moment for you when you knew this is exactly what I want to do? Was it a game? <laughs> was there a situation that you remember? Well, yes and no. I think in general, I wanted to be in sports and, and uh, my brother, um, I have a, uh, I'm the youngest of five. I have two brothers and two sisters, but the, the middle brother, Chris, he was, uh, uh, you know, that's who I ran with essentially, so to speak, in terms of doing sports activities or whatever, just growing up together. And kind of early on, uh, we always talk about 1979, specifically the NFL season. That's, that's kind of like, the first season that I kind of remember watching as a kid. And we, even way back then, we talked about kind of like we could be the next Gumble brothers. And, you know, Bryant Gumble at that time was, was uh, with NBC anchoring their football coverage. And, and, you know, you would also see Greg Gumble on the CBS coverage. Uh, and, and so it was just kind of like, we can get into sports. Like we see those guys doing it. And, you know, we could do what they do, you know what I mean? Right. So it, it, it kind of, that was kind of the, the spark way back then. Um, and I used to, when I, was, when I was younger, I used to watch ACC basketball games and keep my own box scores and stuff. I wouldn't, I wouldn't start writing a story afterwards or whatever, but I always had pen and paper with me and would be mad when the announcers didn't say somebody's name that I didn't know. And it wasn't like you could just go on the internet and check the rosters and stuff. So it was just like, you had to wait for that name to come back around right. and then for them to make a play or something. But um, yeah, that that's kind of early on. I, I knew that I wanted to do something involved with sports. And, and I think uh, the Gumble brothers probably kind of crystallized it for me. Oh, that's pretty cool, man. Uh, you're watching Bartles Breakdown. I'm your host, Stephen Bartle. I got my man, CL uh, Brown, with me, a college basketball reporter. Um, CL, I'm sure you had some, uh, you know, a few different places where you could have gone to school. You chose University of North Carolina. Why? Yeah. Yeah, that, that was kind of funny, too, because all my brothers and sisters went to Carolina. And mm -hmm. so I was not going. I was dead set. I'm not doing this. Uh, my my number one choice was Maryland, and uh, number two was Howard. Okay. And I, I got into both schools with Maryland. Um, it, it really just came out of money. Like, my mom took me aside, and my mom, you know, would never just be like, you need to do this, you know. But she was just like, okay, let's make the comparison here. So if you go to Maryland, you're going to have to get these student loans. You're going to come out of school with X amount of debt. And, you know, if you stay in state and go to Carolina, you know, you'll be straight. <laughs> like we can, <laughs> we can have all of this handled. So uh, that's pretty much what it came down to. I think with Howard, um, I don't remember why, but for some reason it just, the process took long. And so by the time I'd already made up my mind, um, then Howard is like 11th hour tried to, you know what I mean? Like a, yeah. it was kind of like a consideration, but. I, I was locked into Carolina. Plus, we went, it was me and a couple of my buddies came came to Chapel Hill for a weekend and kicked it. Like, uh, you know, my sister that's a year older than me, uh, she took us to this party at Duke and it was off the chain and we met these girls in Carolina. So that, that was it for me. It was a wrap at that point. I was like, man, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I need to go here. So... That's kind of how it worked out for me. That's cool, man. So Maryland was a choice because you didn't want to go to Carolina. You didn't want to follow the family footsteps. Is that what it was? Yeah. I mean, it, it, when I look back, it's kind of silly. You know, Maryland was my, my team, my basketball team. Oh, I got it. Big Lynn Bias fan, yeah. uh, Adrian Branch, all those cats, Keith Gatlin. Um, and uh, that's what I was basing on. Like, it was, A, I just wanted to get out of state. And, and B, you know, why not go to the school that I root for? Sure. And uh, nothing else. It wasn't like I looked at their majors and was like, well, this fits me in X, Y, Z. Um, and, and honestly, at that time, I was thinking I was going to go into, uh, I was going to be an accountant. 
I was looking at business schools and, you know, thinking, thinking that's what I would end up doing. Um, thankfully, <laughs> thankfully that switched. I think I'd be uh, pretty bored, especially around tax time every year, you know, but um, just crunching numbers. But I came to Carolina, my, my brother, Chris, that I mentioned earlier, he was, uh, he was a senior when I was a freshman and he was very involved with like student television and stuff on campus. And so that kind of, uh, that kind of got me in that way. Um, and I started off writing music reviews for our black student paper called the Black Ink on okay. campus. It's now a, a magazine now, but, um, yeah, it's it started off like I didn't start off wanting to write necessarily. I don't start off wanting to be in front of the camera. Mm. And so it kind of okay. just transitioned just from that early part writing music reviews and stuff, it kind of transitioned into me writing sports. Okay. And it sounds like you had quite a uh experience in Carolina. You know, you got siblings there. Um I I can't what what years were you in Carolina CL? Ninety to ninety-four. So we're talking Phelps. Uh, yep, uh, he was in my class. Brian Reese, Eric Montrose. That was all the freshman class. Even uh, uh, now I'm forgetting his last name. Uh, Cliff, that he transferred to Louisville. Cliff Rogier. Cliff Rogier. I can't remember his last name. Yeah. Uh, we that that was uh, Pat Sullivan. Yep. Technically, it's funny, when they came in that year, they were being touted. It wasn't necessarily the same moniker as the Fab Five, but for either they were the highest ranked at their individual positions, whatever it was, I forgot what the hook was, but it was like, nobody has done this in recruiting before. You know what I mean? It was kind of like wow. these five guys coming to campus, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it turned out to be a good time, you know, basketball-wise. Uh, the, the national championship in 93 is funny because I had to work like a week before I did the math and calculate because I worked every Monday. And so okay. I didn't even think about like trying to get somebody to sub, you know, before somebody, you know, before the even tournament started or anything and, and Carolina had advanced. So, um, yeah, man, I watched the first half from the front desk at Carmichael dorm. <laughs> and so it wasn't, Soon as my shit was over, I was out of there. But uh, yeah, it was funny, and I remember it was it was like freezing rain that night in Chapel Hill, which was odd for for that late in the year. But uh, we still had fun uh, celebrating on Franklin Street. So you you were able to be a part of a national championship at Carolina and some great individual players as well. What sticks out uh, most about your college experience, you know, around sports and whatnot? Like, did, was there, a, you know, did you That's do a story? Was there something that, like, blew up or something like that? Well, the, while I was in school, uh, we had a big push for the, the establishment of a freestanding Black Cultural Center. Because um, mm. at that time, there, the, the Black Cultural Center at Carolina was a room. and wasn't even a big room. It was just kind of like a room stuck in the student union uh, that probably had a maximum capacity of, like, 50 people tops maybe not even that many and so um the athletes got involved at least the the front line was was football players uh it was it was about four football players um jimmy hitchcock who who was drafted by new england patriots and played in the league a while um tim smith uh uh john bradley i'm leaving somebody out i'm, I'm blanking right now but it, it it was kind of you know we always kind of see these these flashpoints and sometimes I think now about the Missouri football team a few years ago when they mm -hmm. kind of stood up and said hey this isn't right on campus so it, it it was for me in in that you know ninety ninety four kind of range it was kind of amazing to see. Uh, the power that these athletes could wield if they all came together behind something. Um, obviously, at that time, we didn't get the, the Black Cultural Center established, but the foundation was laid. And, and you know, years later, it ended up, it, there is a freestanding building now on the campus at, at Carolina, the Sonia, Sonia Haynes Stone Black Cultural Center. But um, I would say that was probably what stood out most to me, just kind of uh, how, how that all transpired 
organically. I remember the meeting, it was a black student movement meeting that we were having and we were talking about it. And so um, there was a, a girl that got up and I can't remember her name now, but there was a girl who got up at the meeting and was like, I'm tired of talking. <laughs> Let's do something about it. And mm. from that, you know, there was, I was covering it as a reporter, but from that moment, like at the meeting, we marched from the student union to the chancellor's house at night. And I'm like, man, college students are crazy. When I look back now <laughs> as an adult, <laughs> we just rolled up on his house at like, you know, whatever it was like eight o'clock at night. But I um, love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah, but uh, again, it it was just it was pretty remarkable that that uh that the athletes got involved with that. And we had I remember there was a big, you know, big rally they had at the Smiths at the Dean Smith Center and Spike Lee came in and was like the keynote speaker and stuff. So it was Oh, wow. It was uh, business. Yeah, yeah, it was it was uh interesting times back then. So you you finish up in Carolina and you do you go right into the business or did, yeah, jump right into it. it. And here's another kind of mistake I made, but it, it ended up being okay. Like, I, I don't have any regrets about my career, but I just got antsy, man. Like, you know, I graduated in May and, um, and again, I was trying to be in front of the camera. And so, uh, now let me backtrack a second. So I pledged Cap Alpha Psi Spring 93. Shout out to the bros. To the um, okay. And, All right. <laughs> yes, sir. So uh, I had fun in college and, and I don't mean that in like I was wilding out kind of way, but it was a uh, in the very much in the moment. Uh, I'm not really thinking and planning my future kind of way. Like I felt like I'd have a degree. I'm going to get a job like, it, you know, like <laughs> it wasn't much else to it. Right. And so I didn't really understand the networking and and. You know, I, I should have had an internship at a TV station, which I didn't have. Um, but part of it is because I was in summer school uh, every summer, just trying to, you know, get credits and lighten my load and that kind of stuff. So um, so when I graduated, the only resume tape that I had was from stuff we did in class. Like I didn't have any like real life, real world kind of stuff um, or or the stuff I did with student television. So. I didn't have any like early takers, um, but it was really only, I only gave myself from when I graduated in May to August and I was just antsy and, and kind of the tipping point was I, I was back home working at a record store <laughs> called Peaches. I don't know if y'all had that in the, in the Midwest, but. I've heard of Peaches. Yeah, I heard yeah, of Peaches, yeah, records I working yeah. Peaches records. And this girl I used to date, ex-girlfriend came in the store and I hadn't seen her in, in, you know, a few years or whatever. And, uh, you know, I'm checking her out. We're making, uh, like, literally, I'm at the cashier. I'm not <laughs> checking her out. But so, uh, yeah, so I'm ringing her up and stuff. And we were just making small talk. And she was like, didn't you just graduate from Carolina? And, and it just, like, cut to me because I was, like, thinking to myself, dang, you know, I just graduated and I'm up here and I, you know what I mean? Like I didn't have to go to school to work here, like to be ringing her <laughs> CDs up. And so if it would have been anybody else but an ex-girlfriend, I probably wouldn't have taken it the same, but it was the fact, you know, like it, it was, it somehow made me felt like I wasn't achieving. So, okay. um, so I was just kind of antsy and, and uh, a friend of mine, a former co-editor of mine uh, from the Black Student Paper of Carolina, uh, Chandra McLean, she was working at the Rocky Mount Telegram and she called me up and was like, we're about to have an opening in sports, you know, would you be interested in doing it, you know, um, when it comes open? So I was like, yes. And I didn't have any intention of writing a newspaper, but it was sports. And I'd always, you know, I always could write and felt like comfortable writing. So it wasn't like it was going to be some big transition. And so, uh, yeah, I, I interviewed in Rocky Mountain and got the job. So that, 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 was, that was how I took the dive into it. Oh, that's pretty cool, though. So you just had one, you know, you cash in a record store, but pretty much you've been in the business outside of those two or three months. You've been in the business the whole time then. Yeah, yeah, since 94. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And so now I wasn't always doing exclusive college basketball, though. 
So okay. uh, pretty much in Rocky Mount, I was a prep reporter who would go to college games. Like we would, we would do game coverage um, for all of the triangle schools, uh, Carolina, Duke, NC State. But, uh, and we also did East Carolina too. Um, but I didn't, uh, it wasn't a full time, like it wasn't like a work to beat, you know, during the week I'm keeping up with injuries and, you know, writing preview stories again and that kind of stuff. But it still gave me a taste and we still did the tournament stuff. So that, that also uh, kind of, you know, fed my appetite for it. And so, you know, now that you, are you've been on uh, tremendous platforms, ESPN, The Athletic. You have your own uh, setup now. Kind of run us through how clbrown.com uh, works and, you know, the impetus for starting your own thing, because that fascinates me. How, what, was the, what was the impetus? And then, you know, is it, you know, the, the how am I trying to say this? Like the, the dynamics of it, I'm sure, are different from actually being with somebody as opposed to you having your own shop, but still doing the same thing. You know what I'm talking yeah. about, CL? Yeah, yeah. So when I uh, I got laid off at ESPN in 2017, it, it was part of, you know, shoot, it was about a hundred of, hundred of us or so. And, uh, and especially in college basketball, Dana O'Neill, Andy Katz, like they, they basically gutted all of us. So at that point, and for me, what was kind of jacked up was I ran the uh, London Marathon that year. And so um, on the way back, we went through uh, uh, through Madrid. It was just kind of like a 24-hour layover. I'd never been to Madrid. And so I was like, let's check it out. So we went through Madrid. And I'd had my phone off the whole week. And and it, they knew I was on vacation. Like, it wasn't like, you know, a surprise that I, I just jetted out of the country without telling anybody. So um, I was on vacation, had my phone off all the, the whole time. When we landed in Madrid, a baggage claim is when I turned my phone back on. And um, and I was on Twitter. And, and I was also getting all these text messages. And so I, I was just thinking, okay, these texts are from the whole week and you know whatever people just doing it it was mainly from that day and so it was like people are like are you okay you know you still are you good you still at ESPN blah blah I was like dang what's going on so uh when I went from text to Twitter and I saw um Dana O'Neill had a text that or had a tweet you know that she had been let go then I was like oh man <laughs> I knew it was real and and uh then I I the voicemails were kind of delayed coming, you know, me receiving the voicemails that I got. And so um, I had one voicemail from one of the bosses at ESPN asking me to call. So I knew then in the back of my mind, I was like, I should just, you know, finish out the vacation, fly back to the States and then call. But um, that's when I, I actually I called Leon Carter, who I mentioned earlier, my mentor, and talked to him about it. He was like, man, you're going to be thinking about it anyway. You might as well just call now. So, you know, I, I called and, and got laid off. So that's a long-winded way of saying that's that's where the first kind of seed was planted in my mind. Like, what if I just did this on my own and just see how it would go, you know, just doing college basketball? Um, and, and focusing on what I try and do at, at my site now, clbrownhoops.com, is just to focus on the ACC and, you know, sprinkle in college basketball at large, especially issues and that kind of stuff. And I'm still really still feeling it out, still trying to work it out exactly how this is supposed to look and how it's mm -hmm. supposed to go and, and what I need to do because um, you can kind of go crazy trying to do too much. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so uh, this year in the ACC, I, I, it, and I just launched in January. So um, we had some some issues kind of getting the website up early on. Um, and uh, so initially all I did was post stuff on my YouTube channel, mm -hmm. which shameless plug is also CL Brown Hoops <laughs> YouTube. Okay. But um, yeah, it's, it's just, it, 
it's a process of trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work. Uh, also trying to figure out how to monetize uh, the site and get sponsors. And so I'm thinking year two of it will be better than year one. Well, by definition, it'll be better because, you know, we don't have a tournament. Like this yeah, is going to be a big, I know. <laughs> a big push to get, you know, viewership and readership. And so, and what I think I might do next year is seek out some more students. I had a couple of students that uh, uh, would work for me and with me um, this year here and there. Uh, and, and they didn't even really kind of join until the last, you know, three or four weeks of the season, basically. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Just, just kids that reached out to me and, you know. Really? One of them I knew before because he wrote for the uh, the Daily Tar Heel at, at Carolina. And uh, one was just out of the blue. Um, my, my my intern, Tia Harrison, she was on, uh, she was my, she was in charge of doing my Instagram uh, for, the, for the weeks that, you know, she kind of joined on. But she was interested in kind of basically getting into business and, and doing what I did. So she wanted to shadow. So I, so I brought her along. So Next year, I might try and expand that and, and get students at different schools just to get a little more um, content and and day to day kind of stuff. Um, but I, I'll see. It's 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 hard. <laughs> it's hard going going at it uh, by yourself. But because uh, some days I'm I'm like human. Like some days I don't want to write. Some days I don't want to do stuff. And you can't dictate when the news is going to break. So um, so I'm still kind of figuring it all out but I, it's it's worthwhile if you can get it to where you want it to be and I'm nowhere near where I want it to be yet um and especially not with sponsorships but uh but I feel like it's worth trying to give it another year and and then we'll see what happens from there so when when ESPN let all these people off and then the athletic emerges right I know that the athletic was there beforehand but it seemed like the athletic absorbed, like you said yourself. I think Dane O'Neill's still there, right? Yeah. Eamon Brennan. Um, did I say yeah, that? Yeah, Eamon. Yeah. Eamon's yeah. over there. Uh, Brian Hamilton. Was Brian he? Ha there? Brian Hamilton came from uh, Sports Illustrated. Okay, he came from Sports Illustrated. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, Brian Bennett, who was another college basketball writer, who uh, who ironically we worked together in Louisville at the Courier Journal. Um, he also. Uh, uh, was a former ESPNer who is uh, who's with the Athletic now. Okay, uh, so, so clbrownhoops.com, I'm envisioning is going to be similar to the Athletic. Is that accurate? Uh, well, no, because I do video. <laughs> oh, um, okay. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> no, nah, not really. Um, I, I, I don't write as, as long as I did when I was with the athletic either. Um, okay. there's just really not enough time for it, for, for me to be a one man shop and, you know, try and keep up with stuff. But I also, uh, some of the video things I try and do, um, I, I did kind of a small series, if you will, um, with coaches and I try and do stuff where it's, it's, it's not X's and O's of basketball. It's just kind of slice of life or, or, or whatever, something off the court that, that may affect the program or it may not. So I sat down with, uh, with Coach K at Duke. And we talked about um, he has these like little cadet soldiers uh, that are in his, you know, in his office. Okay. And the story behind those soldiers, why he keeps those soldiers is – um, that Al McGuire, the late Al McGuire, gave them as a gift. He used to go to like flea markets and oh, and wow. shop, and he would just like if he thought of you, like you know, he would get something, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and it wasn't uh, it's, it was just kind of a neat story of how you know he, how thoughtful he was. He did this. It wasn't just with Coach K. He's done that with you know other people, but um, uh, yeah, it was like little. They basically look like West Point cadets, and so that's why it kind of hit home for Coach K, uh, given his background. So, you know, I, I tried to do little things like that with with different coaches. Um, I, I played Kevin Keats at NC State. I played him in ping pong because, um, yeah, yeah, and we did an interview. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it would have been better if I would have won, but um, 
you know. I hadn't played in a long time. I want to get them again, man, because I hadn't played. <laughs> and I just went to do the interview and play them. So he beat me beat me pretty bad. But, um, you know, I, 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 I say all that to say I just try and do some stuff that's a little bit different. Um, Matt Doherty, who, who's former North Carolina coach, among other places, uh, he would do a uh, film breakdown with me. And so we, we looked at, you know, different players. Um, we did a Vernon Carey Jr. Uh, breakdown at one point in the season. Uh, we kind of did, in, in terms of looking ahead, we did David Johnson from Louisville, the freshman point guard, who, uh, who we think is going to be really good. It was ironic because we, while we were breaking down the film on Carey, we looked at some of the game tape they had against Louisville. And in that Louisville, uh, video David Johnson was making plays like in between where we would get to the carry stuff we saw David Johnson making these plays and so he made a comment that he felt like you know he's basically going to be one of the best guards in the nation um, and so from that we kind of flipped that into his own uh, his own segment so so you know I I, I felt like I had good ideas <laughs> no it sounds great yeah it's great man and trying to get it out there so so somebody that wanted to follow in your footsteps, what would be the best advice you could give them? Uh, well, make a plan <laughs> and stick to it. That, that would be more than anything else. Uh, one thing, though, is um, I don't know how to say this kind of diplomatically, but, <laughs> but everybody can't do this. Like, That's true. I've been in the business since 94 covering college basketball. You know what I'm saying? And, and obviously I wasn't doing it at the same level I was I am now back then but I've I've built up a pretty good number of sources I've put in the years you know um and that has given me the cachet coach K doesn't grant one-on-ones with anybody you right. know what I'm saying and I was lucky to get like it's not like you know <laughs> I understand that I was lucky to get that time with him but um that's just that's just kind of to say that uh I feel like I got to a level where I'm respected enough in the business and I've been established enough to where I could take this leap. And so I, I would also encourage if, if this is what you want to do, then you got to put in some work first and kind of establish yourself. You can't just parachute in and think that you're going to do, you know, but if you believe in it, you believe in yourself, it can be done. And, and I would definitely encourage it. But, um, but I would also say you can't skip steps in the process. You know, I want to ask you real quick, because uh, we're, we're wrapping up here on Bartle's Breakdown. I want to ask you real quick, I thought it was fascinating that during the season, it, might, it was probably around January, Coach K went off. And he went yeah. off about the lack of a college basketball commissioner. And then he gave statistics behind what he was saying. And, and he was saying something like 80 players in the last two years that could have returned back to college basketball because they put their name in the draft early did not. And coach K was upset that not upset, but he was, he was basically giving us a, a view of the landscape where the G league is, is really stronger. They're going to offer more money. Uh, we've got countries now like Australia, New Zealand, Italy that take players right out of high school to give them that year in between. And he's thinking that college basketball is getting left behind. Um, what, what were your thoughts on that when you when you heard Coach K, you know, address that situation? Yeah, well, I think he's he's periodically kind of been trying to sound this alarm, like getting on his full Paul Revere. Like, look, <laughs> you know, college basketball has to be progressive in taking steps because change is going to come, and when it comes we don't want to get left behind. And so um, it kind of just fed into that, that whole narrative. I think if, if he had his way, there would be like a college basketball commissioner or czar or somebody who kind of spearheads this, uh, basically functioning as, uh, as uh, Adam Silver of college basketball, if you will. Um, but, you know, obviously that, that position doesn't exist right now. Right. Um, so more than anything else, that one of the things he's been consistent with, especially when he was still the uh, the coaching USA Basketball, um, he's he's talked about the, just there being more communication 
between all of the entities involved, including, you know, not just NBA college basketball, but including agents and shoe companies. Like they're all part of the equation and it, it, it can either work well <laughs> or they can work as separate entities and we end up having the FBI case that we had, you know, the last year and stuff. So um, he, he, I could see, well, depending on when he retires, I could see him not necessarily wanting to do that, but still having a big voice in what should happen and, and trying to advise uh, college basketball powers that be on, uh, on the direction of it. And this year, the ACC was not traditionally uh, what we have come to <laughs> you know, understand about the ACC. How was it this year in terms of covering the lead? Because it there was a it, it seemed like CL for two thirds of the season there were going to be four teams that were going to get into the tournament from the ACC, something like that. It, shoot, uh, it seemed like three for for most of it, and in Virginia, uh, I thought Tony Bennett did a great job this year because when you when you saw them earlier in the year, they they're always solid defensively, but they yeah. just struggled to score, and he was like, man, this team. <laughs> You know, and uh, by the end of the year, they had really gathered steam. They they knew who they were. They kind of developed guys. Um, Kehi Clark, man, that dude, people underestimate him because of his size, but he is a killer on the court. He really uh, made, is. Made, always has poise in late games. I mean, Purdue knows <laughs> from do. last year. You know, he made the pass. I I, I – I still, you know, when they played the replay the other day, I still am in awe of just him in that situation, not just giving the ball up to the, you know, I think it was uh, Ty Jerome who was right by him, the, you know, the experienced guy who's kind of a team leader and making his own play, seeing Diakate for that pass. But anyway, um, yeah, this year in the ACC, it was just uh, – <laughs> it was a trash year. I, I don't think you could say it any other way. It, it wasn't a great year, but it, it did make for some compelling upsets and crazy games. Clemson breaking the streak, uh, 0 for 59 lifetime in Chapel Hill and, and them having to come back from 13 to do it and win in overtime. Uh, and they were just funny as a team themselves as they beat the top three teams in the ACC um, they beat uh, Duke in, in Clemson. They also beat Louisville in Clemson uh, and Florida State. And so, um, but then, you know, <laughs> they had crazy losses too. You know, it was just one of those years where where anything seemingly could happen. That's why it was also, I wanted to see how the ACC tournament was going to play out because um, it wasn't necessarily a given that one of those top four seeds uh, was going to win. That's true. Well, this is CL Brown. CL, let the people know where they can find you and uh, shout out your website again for me. Yeah, I try and make it simple for the people. If you just remember CL Brown Hoops, you can find me anywhere. That's my Twitter <laughs> sign on CL Brown Hoops. That's my YouTube channel, CL Brown Hoops. That's my Instagram, CL Brown Hoops, and the website itself, clbrownhoops.com. So uh, I, I hope to have some good stuff. Here moving forward, I got a video I haven't posted yet um, of Josh Pastner from Georgia Tech. We uh, I don't know how many how many programs in the Big Ten use this, but um, it's or something like it. It's called the NOAA system, where it's it's to help you shoot better. And so um, I put Josh Pastner out there. You know, he was on the '97 Arizona National Championship team, wow. so I asked him if he still got it. So we had him shooting and. Uh, basically, to, to sum up the NOAA system, it's uh, they determine some algorithm determine a 45 degree arc is like the perfect arc for a jump shot. And mm -hmm. so it'll tell you what degree you're shooting at as you shoot it. And so uh, you want to get to 45 every time. And so I had Josh out there shooting it to see how, how close he came to, to shooting a perfect arc. Uh, on most of his shots so so I'll, I'll post that sometime it's kind of it's just weird right now Steve because <laughs> we don't have a tournament man no it's just I know. weird right now no it's, it's it, we all doing this yeah you know what I mean because we I, I can't remember a time when I wasn't in March Madness like yeah you. so it's yeah. it is weird man but that's one of the reasons why I want to kick up these uh 
interviews because people they're fascinated by hearing about people like UCL who are in the game, been in the game for decades, but you have a very unique perspective. And so, you know, I'm sure that people will get a lot from this. Yeah, I, I appreciate you having me on, man. And always been rock solid. That's what I'm telling you. I, I wouldn't have just jumped on with anybody, you know, without knowing, okay, what are we going to talk about? How long it's going to be? You know what I mean? It was just like, you was like, you want to be on? I'm like, sure. So well, I uh, appreciate and, you, brother. I always do, CL. You, are, you yeah. always be cool with me, brother. Uh, appreciate it. Appreciate well, thank it. Thank you. But that'll, that'll do it for this edition of Bartles Breakdown. Make sure you come back to the page. We'll have great interviews like this. We'll also be going live, and we, we'll get to this corona situation together, everyone. So check in on loved ones. Check in on some of the er elderly people or people who are living alone. Don't forget about them either, and stay positive. Until next time, y'all, peace.